take your Bible this evening for our scripture reading, if you would, please. Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40, please. We're going to read verses 20 through 23 of Genesis chapter 40. Not very long verses. Let's just read them all in unison together tonight, all right? And uh, so we'll just read 20 through 23 together of Genesis chapter 40. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read God's Word. All of us standing. And let's begin together on verse 20 of Genesis chapter 40. Ready? And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture here this evening. Thank you, Lord, already now for the good music tonight and for the good testimonies from Brother Moreland and Brother Jarvis. I thank you, Lord, for the good fellowship and the good spirit here this evening, for the wonderful music. Lord, we pray your blessing now on the special as it's sung. And then, Father, as we look into your word tonight, uh, help us to, to focus and concentrate and ask you to minister to our heart. I pray that you'll speak to people's hearts through the special by Xavier this evening and prepare us for to be ready to receive your word this evening. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave His Son for men to die, that He might men redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the fall, Thou hast devised salvation's plan, For Thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never end. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word tonight. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, that we have copies of it tonight, and I pray that we would give our attention to your word this evening. Lord, we're a needy people, and we need you to speak to our hearts tonight. So, Lord, and by thy Holy Spirit, uh, give us what we need this evening. Help me as I bring the message, and help the people as they listen to the message tonight. 
Lord, I pray your will will be done these next few moments that we spend together. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis chapter 40, if your Bible's open there, and I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the forgotten man, the forgotten one, if you will. And, you know, it's a terrible thing to be forgotten. Um, we, you know, if you don't, you don't go to, uh, you don't grow up uh, with a family at church without occasionally, uh, especially when you're the pastor, uh, maybe it happens at other folks too, especially if you have husband and wife and you drive separately to church. Uh, we got home one Sunday when our children were little, and uh, my wife, we got down, sat down to eat dinner, and Amy was there, and Nathan was there, but Andy was not there. And, uh, oh, I don't, I don't remember how old he was, uh, not, not probably four or five years old, and we're trying to figure out where Andy is. And my wife thought I had him, and I thought she had him, and where he was was he was sleeping on the front row of the church. And uh, we had to drive back to church, unlock the door, walk down there, he's still sleeping, he had no idea. Uh, probably would have slept there the afternoon, and uh, but uh, we we he was forgotten. He was forgotten, and people can be forgotten. You know, I read a uh, survey here that uh, the things that people most often forget, eighty-three percent of us will forget names. Sixty percent of us will forget where something is. Fifty-seven of us will forget phone numbers. I mean, especially now that they're programmed into your phone, how I many you find out you don't know numbers like you used to? Yeah, absolutely. Used to be you had to memorize those things, and now you just know I had, it's in my phone. I'll just get it. Words, we forget 53% of us forget the words that, we, that, that are said. 42% so, uh, of us will forget faces. Um, if you can't remember whether you've just done something or not, then you're about like 38% of the population. It's amazing what we forget. Answers to prayer can be forgotten. That's a sad thing, isn't it? We can forget what God has done for us. In the story tonight from Genesis chapter 40, Joseph was forgotten. He's been in prison and, and he meets in prison the butler and the baker of Pharaoh. Uh, he had gotten angry with them one day and threw them both in the slammer. And while they're in there, they meet Joseph, and uh, they have a dream, and Joseph interprets the dream, and he tells them what it is, and then it comes to pass exactly as Joseph said it would. And on Pharaoh's birthday, he brings the, both the butler and the baker out, he cuts the head of the baker off, and he keeps the butler, and the butler, when he knows that his dream is good news, and that he's going to live, he tells Joseph, I'll remember you. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll get you out of here, man. And uh, don't worry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in a good word for you. And notice what the Scripture says in verse 23, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him or forgot him. How long? For a week or two? No. A month? No. Oh, just a couple months. No. Verse 1 of chapter 41. It came to pass at the end of two full years. Imagine Joseph sitting there in the prison with the calendar on the wall and marking off the days, you know. Well, one of these days, I'm sure it's this week he's going to remember me. And week goes by and two weeks go by and a month goes by and two months go by and six months go by and a year go by. And I'm sure he said, forget it, man. He's never going to remember me. I'm forgotten. He forgets for two whole years. And if we're not careful, we forget some people too. And I'm going to submit to you tonight, we've forgotten some people, and, and by and large, I'm talking now the church as a whole, but maybe even us as individuals. And one of the first forgotten people that I think we've forgotten about is the missionary. The missionary can be a forgotten person. They're called to the mission field by God. They begin to prepare Maybe they're called in school or maybe they're called and then they go to get some training and some preparation and then they have to travel and begin to try to get support from churches and that's a process that can take, uh, uh, depending on the size of the family and depending on the field they're going to, it could take three years, four years, five years, uh, depending on the amount of money that needs to be raised and the support level they need to have and then sometimes after that they have to go to language school 
and, and learn the language for the place they're going, and then they travel uh, to a foreign land, and you know what happens? We forget about them. It's true. They no longer hear from people at home anymore. One missionary said this, When I left for the field, I predicted we would be forgotten within six months. He said, but I was wrong. It was two months. When in two months, he said, no more, there was no more emails, uh, no more text messages, birthdays and anniversaries were forgotten. Nothing. That's a sad thing. And, and, and if missionaries are honest, they'll tell you that's usually the case. Even though we have means to stay much more in touch now than what we ever have. Missionaries can be forgotten people. How can you not forget the missionaries? Hey, some of the missionaries here tonight would, would testify to you there's nothing quite as sad as walking into a supporting church and people asking who you are. Hmm? Or, welcome, are you new to the church? you visiting? <laughs> and they don't recognize you or you even tell them your name. Well, I'm Adam Jarvis. I'm a missionary to Honduras. Oh, that's nice. It doesn't even register that we support you. I hope that doesn't happen here. But how do you, how do you not forget the missionary? Well, number one, you pray for them. You pray for the missionary. Call their names in prayer. The missionary will testify to you. And I know, listen, I know sometimes they say, well, listen, we... We want your prayer support as much as we want your financial support. And I know sometimes you sit in the, in, the, in the pew or in the chair and you say, yeah, sure. But they mean that. They need your prayers. They need you to go to God on their behalf. You have, you have no idea, and, and sometimes your testimonies of missionaries who certain things happened on the field or they needed something in a certain way and God provides it and they think, wow, that was great. And, and they realize somebody must have been praying during that time. Somebody must have been praying for this. And, and you have to have people pray. But the other thing it does, when you pray for people, you remember them. You remember them. The Fennel family. Have you been praying for them? By name? Have you prayed for uh, Brother and Mrs. Fennel? Bill and Amy Fennel? Been praying for the boys? That I think Billy must, might be a, a junior I'm, I'm expecting. Drew and Chad and Gabe and Cooper. You pray for those boys? Praying for them as they come. Two of the boys are at college. The other three will be here with us. Pray for the Rose family. You praying for Matthew and Rebecca? And there, there, there are four little girls. I don't always get them in the right order, but I know their, their Bible names. There's, there's Rebecca, and I know there's Hannah, and I know there's Esther, and um, I think it's Lydia. Is that right? And uh, Lydia, you pray for those four little girls traveling around with their darling little girls, uh, traveling down with their parents on deputation. Uh, Tim and Janelle Booth, pray for the Booths. You ought to be able to remember the Yoder's name. <laughs> Dave and Terry, they're members here. Okay? And, and, and you pray for them. No wonder Paul would write to the church at Thessalonica and he said, Brethren, pray for us. Pray for us. He, he wanted them to pray. Why? Because I think not only do I need your prayers, I need you to go to God on, on, on our behalf. But hey, you know why? Then you'll remember me. You'll remember me. You won't forget the missionary if you're praying for the missionary. Those, those 70 missionaries in the bulletin every Wednesday night you ought, to, you ought to take, if there's seven days in a week, can you take ten missionaries a day and call them out in prayer? And, and, and know who they are and what field they're on? And, and ask God to meet their needs? Pray for them. The second thing you do is support them financially. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Would you look there with me, please? I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. The church at Philippi was a wonderful missionary church. And in chapter 4, notice with me in verse number 15. Philippians 4.15, are you there? Okay, notice what he says. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving 
but who? Ye only. Paul said, okay, so when I departed from Macedonia, he had the Macedonian vision, remember? And I went over there to Philippi. When I left there, guess what? Everybody forgot me. Except one church. You. I'd like to go to the mission field and you get your first support statement from your mission board and there's one church on there remembered you. That'd be a little discouraging, wouldn't it? You say, wait a minute, one? One church? Well, praise God for one! And that's what Paul did. Praise God, hey, you remembered me. And you communicated to me. You, you helped me. And notice what Paul told them. Even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. And Paul said in verse 17, Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to whose account? Yeah, it would be our account. And God says, I, I want to support you financially. You support financially so that when 50 young people come to know Christ their Savior, that fruit gets put on your account. When young people get discipled and they grow up and they get married and they have a godly family and they begin to serve God, guess what? That's fruit that goes to your account. Because you had a part in that financially. You help support them financially. And I know this, the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay? Tell you, tell you where your heart is, it's where you put your money. And wherever your money is, that's where your heart's going to be. And, and so he supports them financially. And by the way, it's, it's through, it's to this church who, listen, who gave once and again to the missionary, the Apostle Paul, that God gave this promise in verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Can I, can I, can I be bold enough to say that if you are not giving to missions, that promise is not for you? Boy, that's quiet in here. Don't bow your head. I didn't say it's time to pray. No, that's a missionary promise. He gave that promise to those who once and again sent to His need. When no other church gave to Him, the church at Philippi continued to give to Him. They got that promise. You don't find that promise in any other epistles. But you do for the church of Philippi. You want that promise for your life? Give to the missionary. Support the missionary. An old missionary couple had been working in Africa for years and they were returning to New York City for their retirement. Of course, they had no pension. Their health was broken. They were a little bit discouraged and they were afraid. As they were nearing the, the, the port there in New York, they discovered they were on the same ship as President Teddy Roosevelt who was returning from one of his big game hunting expeditions in Africa. Nobody paid much attention to them, but they stood and watched all the fanfare that accompanied the president and different passengers trying to get a glimpse of the President of the United States. As they pulled into the harbor, the old missionary said to his wife, something's wrong. Why should we have given our lives in faithful service to God in Africa all these many years and have no one care a thing about us? This man comes back from a hunting trip in Africa and everybody makes much over him. And they don't give two hoots about us. And his wife said, well dear, you shouldn't feel that way. And he said, I can't help it, it just doesn't seem right. They docked in New York and the band played and the mayor and other dignitaries were there to greet the president and the papers carried all the story of the president's arrival, but no one mentioned the missionary couple. They slipped off the ship, found a cheap hotel, hoping the next day to see what they might be able to do to make a living in the city. But that night, the man said to his wife, I, I just can't take this. I don't think God's treating us fairly. And his wife said, well, why don't you go in the bedroom and tell that to the Lord? A short time later, the man came out from the bedroom, but now his countenance was completely different. 
And his wife said, what happened? And he said, the Lord has settled it with me. I told him how bitter I was about the president receiving that tremendous homecoming and nobody met us at all when we returned home. And when I finished, it seemed as though the Lord put His hand on my shoulder and simply told me, you're not home yet. You're not home yet. Don't forget the missionary. And missionary, when you seem to be forgotten, when you seem like no one's in touch, when you seem like nobody notices, and you seem like you're not appreciated, I want you to remember something. You're not home yet. The reward isn't here. The reward is over there. And, and that's who we're waiting. Hey, it's, it's nice for folks to remember you here, but I tell you what, the Lord never forgets you. And the Lord knows where you are. The missionary can be a forgotten person. I thank God for a church that doesn't forget the missionary. Love the missionary. God loves a church that loves His servants. Did you hear that? God loves the church who loves His servants. And He'll honor that church. And He's honored us because of that, I believe. Number two, the second person that can be forgotten is the lost man. Jesus said in Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He's come for the lost man. You look at most church calendars today and you'll see picnics, aerobics, softball, bowling, support groups, dramas, worship teams, trips, ball games, but no soul winning. No outreach. No, no time to go win the lost. No time for any, nobody to work a bus route. The forgotten man in America is the lost man. The forgotten man, certainly in the rest of the world, is the lost man. What about the lost and those who've never heard? We've been listing ten countries at a time on Wednesday night for how long, Brother Bob? Almost over three years now. Every 52 Wednesdays in a year for over three years, that's 156 Wednesday nights. And, and we're, what letter are we up to? We're still in the C's of unreached people groups. I mean, people who have not been reached with the gospel, don't have a Bible in their language. Many of them never even heard of Jesus Christ. How can that happen? In a, in a day when, listen, when, when I hear of people who come over and they, they take them way up into the mountain and they say, we're going to go meet some people and, uh, you know, they, they, they've never heard of Jesus, they've never heard the gospel, and they take them off the mountain and the chief comes out and wants to give them a gift. And you know what he brings out to them? A bottle of Coca-Cola. How can Coca-Cola get there and we can't get there with the gospel? How can somebody have passion for sugared colored water more than we have for the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can they want them to have a Coke more than we want them to have Jesus? And they're all over the world. What about the lost men in Siberia? What about the lost in Iran? What about the lost in Kyrgyzstan? What about the lost in India? What about the lost in China? What about the lost in the Middle East? I think about that lame man who laid by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. For 38 years he laid there. And remember when Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? And you know what the fellow said? I have no man to help me. Wait a minute. No man? Doesn't he have a family? Doesn't he have friends? Doesn't he have anybody that know him? That, and I guarantee you, he had to have parents. He had to have a family. He had to have some brothers and sisters. He had to have some relatives. He had to have some acquaintances. He had to have somebody who knew him, but they had forgotten about him. And for 38 years, he was forgotten. Forgotten by others. Forgotten by his friends. Forgotten by his family. But wasn't forgotten by Jesus. Jesus was there to take care of him. We studied this morning again the prodigal son in Luke 15. And all of Luke 15 is Jesus emphasizing that, that He receives sinners. That He's come for the lost. 
Whether it's the lost sheep or the lost coin or the lost son, He's coming for the lost. Oh, that we don't get off our focus and, and realize that we need to go after the lost people. Why do, you, why do you have missionaries? Because people are lost. That's why. Why do you have a bus route? Because people are lost. Why do you have tracks and go out and give the gospel? Because people are lost. Why do you have a radio broadcast? Because people are lost. We need to get the gospel to them. Are you concerned about the lost? Folks in the neighborhoods around here are lost. Folks in the restaurants are lost. Folks all around us in, in Columbus and Grove City are lost. Let's tell them about Jesus. Let's not get the focus on the 90 and 9 and forget about the one that's lost. I'll remind you, the shepherd left the 90 and 9 in the wilderness and he went after the one lost sheep. It was important to him. Andrew first found his own brother, Simon Peter. And brought him to Jesus. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you brought someone to Jesus? How concerned are you about the lost? The lost man's a forgotten, forgotten man. The missionary's a forgotten man. This one may surprise you. The third one, the lost, the, the, the forgotten man is the Son of God. The missionary, the lost man, and the Son of God. Hosea 8.14 says, Israel hath forgotten her maker. In the midst of denominations, doctrinal diversity, ceremony, political and cultural correctness, ecumenical idiocy, We've lost Christ. He's to be exalted. Colossians 1 and verse 18 says, In everything, He is to have the preeminence. You know what preeminence means? Preeminence means He's to be exalted. Preeminence means to be, the word means to be first. He's to be first. That in all things, He is to be first. First and foremost. Remember the, the, the fella in um, 3 John, I believe it is, or I think it's 3 John, Diotrephes. He loves to have the preeminence. He loves to be first. Well, why didn't ask me to do that? I could have done that. Why didn't ask me to help? I would have done a good job of that. Why didn't ask me to play that? I would have played that better. Why don't ask me to sing that? Why don't ask me to teach that? Why don't ask me, 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 me? Because I want to have the preeminence. Hmm? Who do you want to be first? Jesus is to be first. Sirs, the Greek said, we would see Jesus. We would see Jesus. Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. What's our job? Our job is to lift Him up. Not ourselves. Lift up Jesus Christ. Let other, listen, give Him the glory. Hey, put Him first. The job of the Sunday school teacher is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the usher is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the junior church worker is to lift up Jesus Christ. Hey, the job of the choir member is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the instrumentalist is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the nursery worker is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the deacon is to lift up Jesus Christ. The job of the pastor is to lift up Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. In all things, He's to have the preeminence, the preeminence of Jesus Christ. Let's not forget the preeminence of Christ. Let's not forget the person of Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God. He's the Savior of man. He's the kind, compassionate, forgiving, and loving, and just. He's Jesus. He's Jesus. Don't forget the person of Christ. Don't forget the power of Jesus Christ. 
All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to every creature. He has power over sickness. He has power over disease. He has power over the wind and the waves. He has power over the heavens. Hey, He has power over sin. Sin does not have to have dominion over us. Why? Because Christ has the power. He breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the captives free. Don't forget the power of Christ, the person of Christ, the preeminence of Christ, but don't forget the plan of Christ. What's the plan of Christ? It's real simple. Each one, reach one. It's real simple. Come, go, and bring. It's, only, it's the only plan He's got. I mentioned it, I don't know when I mentioned it, but I mentioned it that, that how the angels were involved in everything that Jesus did in His coming to earth. And I'm sure when it came time for uh, Jesus to say, them to say, Lord, how, how is the gospel going to go? How are people going to find out of your death, your burial, and your resurrection? How are they going to know? How's the word going to spread? And Jesus said, I'm going to let men and women do it. And I wonder if the angels bowed their head and said, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I wonder if any angel had enough intestinal fortitude to, to ask, is there a plan B? Is there a backup plan? We don't have a lot of confidence in these people. And I wonder if they ever look at Jesus and say, Jesus, are you sure? Hey, when we see all the, un when half of the world, almost of the world's population, it's over three billion, I've never heard of Jesus out of the seven. I wonder if they look at Jesus sometimes and say, Jesus, are you sure we can't help out? They're not, they, they seem to be getting involved in so many other things, they've forgotten your plan. Your plan is for everyone to reach one. You think about that and think, man, in 52 weeks of the year, 365 days, I can't find one person I can lead to Christ and disciple them and get them to serve God so they're ready to go win somebody? One in a year? That's His plan. That's His plan. Don't, don't, don't think, oh, i got to get somebody saved every day. No, why don't you get one saved? And by the way, the Great Commission is not just saving them. The Great Commission is baptizing them and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It is making a disciple into them. Or you haven't fulfilled the Great Commission. You've only filled part of that Great Commission. And so we have to remember the plan. And it's not out of date, my friend. Is is. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is that out of date? Is it there a price to pay for sin? The wage of sin is death. Is that out of date? Is the fact that God commended His love toward us and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us, is that out of date? Is, is the fact that the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, is that out of date? Is whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? Is that out of date? No, it's not out of date. God is always right. And His plan is always correct. And His plan always works. But we have to work it. And let me, let me assure you, it is work. It is labor. Let us labor for the Master. The harvest is plenteous. What's the problem? The labors are few. What's the problem? People don't want to labor. It's labor. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Weep, O oh, the erring one. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing. That's our job. That's what we're to do. Don't forget the plan. I want to ask you a question tonight. Have you forgotten the missionary? Have you forgotten... The lost man? Have you forgotten Jesus Christ? And the way you forget Jesus Christ is He's no longer first. You become first. It becomes more about you. Well, 
I'm doing this. Where's everybody else? Am I the one around here that works? What's everybody else doing? See? And you're focused on you instead of focused on him. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. As we run the race, Hebrews 12, we're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You get your eyes off on anybody else. You get your eyes off on yourself. You're sure to stumble. You're sure to fall. Don't, don't get so busy working for Jesus, you forget Jesus. Forget who you're working for and forget who you're working with. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Three forgotten people. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone tonight. Lord, we're asking you to take the truth now this evening and put it into our hearts. We do not want to forget the missionary. We do not want to forget the lost man. We do not want to forget the Son of God. Lord, I pray that each of us tonight would be asking you on the brink of another missions conference what you would have us to do as we pray for the missionaries and what you would have us do to support the missionary financially. That each of us would seek your face about that. We would like to have fruit that would abound our account. We would like to have some fruit that would bring glory to your name. We can't go to Armenia we can't go to Iran. We can't go to Kyrgyzstan. But we can help those who do go. Help those who are being trained to go. We can't go to Honduras. We can't reach people there, but we can help support those who do. We can't go to Kenya. We can't go to the Philippines. But we can help those who do. Oh, God, help us. Help us not to forget the lost. Burden us, Lord, to seek the lost. As the Father has sent you, even so you send us. And help us to go forth from this place this week to seek and to save the lost. Don't let us forget the lost man. And then, Father, help us tonight to remember the Son of God. That He would have preeminence in our lives. That we would know the person of Christ and the power of Christ. And we would be carrying out the plan of Christ. We love you. Speak to our hearts. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here tonight would say, Pastor, I, I know that if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven. There's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I needed to be saved, and that Jesus was the Savior I needed. And there's a time when I know that I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone as my Savior. And Pastor, I know tonight if I died, I'd go to heaven because my faith is in Jesus Christ. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony and say, Pastor, that's me, I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put them down. Here tonight would say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. But I'd like to know that. Would you let me pray for you? So somebody here tonight would say, Pastor, I'm not sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. But I appreciate you praying for me. I am concerned about it. Would you just slip your hand up and put it back down and say, Pastor, pray for me tonight? I'd be happy to do that. You couldn't raise your hand the first time, but you raise it now. Is there someone like that would say, pray for me? I think the message was to believers this evening. I wonder how many tonight would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart. Maybe it's about the missionary. Maybe it's about the lost man. Maybe it's about the Son of God being preeminent in your life, His power in your life, His person in your life, carrying out His plan. I wonder how many believers here tonight and say, Preacher, the Spirit of God has spoken to my heart tonight. I want you to pray for me as God deals with my heart. Would you slip your hand up, Christian, and say, Pray for me tonight, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. 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 You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray. We'll have our invitation. 
If God has spoken to your heart, I want you to respond to Him tonight. Some of you ought to just come and kneel at the altar and say, Lord, what would you have me do at this missions conference? What would you have me to do? What would you have me to do as far as my praying for the missionaries? What would you have me do as far as my supporting the missionaries? Some of you need to bow your knee and say, God, it's time I start winning the lost. It's time I start witnessing again. I go week after week after week and I never really think about lost people. They're forgotten to me. Whatever it is God's dealt with your heart about, respond to Him tonight, will you? Heavenly Father, thank You for speaking to hearts tonight. I pray for Your will and Your way now in this invitation. May each one do what You're bidding them to do in their heart. And we'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Will you please? Oh, soul, are you weary That's right. and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us and no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Sing that chorus with him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We're going to close in prayer. I want you uh, be praying for Brenda and her family. Uh, her dad, most you know, went to heaven on Friday, wasn't it? On Friday. And uh, so the service for him is Wednesday, I believe, in Newark. And so be praying for Brenda and her family and uh, for that service on uh, Wednesday. And your dad knew the Lord as a Savior, and so he's in heaven. How old was your dad? 99. 99. Long life. Okay. That's right. Had that extra nine months there, huh? Amen. And uh, not if it starts at conception, it does. But uh, we don't start counting until they come into the world, I guess. And uh, but that's good. We're 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 thankful for that, and uh, just uh, pray for them. An adjustment for them. Most of you don't know. Every Sunday they'd leave here and go see Dad. Uh, they'd shop for him or do whatever he needs, and they would spend their Sunday that way. And this was a different Sunday for you. And uh, that's that's hard when you do that year Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and all of a sudden that's not there. That's an emptiness and a, and a void for them. So pray, pray for Neil and Brenda and lift them up and encourage them. And I know they appreciate you doing that for them. All right? Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for a good Lord's Day. And thank you for speaking to our hearts. And thank you for the faithfulness of folks to be in church Sunday morning and Sunday night. And, Lord, we want to tell you that we love you this evening. I pray that you'll use us this week and that we'll leave this place and that others will see Christ in us. Lord, I pray that you will be number one in everything we say and do, that every conscious thought we have will have you at the center. And Lord, our life will revolve around what you want us to do and what you want us to be. 
So, Lord, dismiss us from this place with your care. Now watch over us. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together, shall we? Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.